everybody, it's Jeremy. I don't know why I did that. That's the uh, wrong thing. Anyways, welcome back to Dungeon of the Mad Mage. <laughs> we are back from break. Uh, my head's a little crazy right now. I almost screamed um, out, and Mitch! And Mitch, right. Uh, when we left our heroes, they had been uh, spending time around the City of Splendors, researching things, working on crafts, and um, gaining rapport with various different factions. And we now go to Ezra to see what he is doing for his day on the 14th. So Ezra, what's up? How it do? Uh, so the first thing he would be doing early in the morning is looking for spell scrolls to continue to build out his ritual spell list. Okay. Gotcha. So getting spell scrolls is going to involve, um, you know, going to a couple of different places, uh, inquiring with different individuals. A lot of spell scrolls are done as kind of like on request. Requested. Yeah, that type of thing. But if you want to spend, uh, you know, a, a chunk, like a, a work section of your day, um, trying to like peruse a bunch of different shops and seeing if you get lucky, you might very well get lucky. No. No? You just want to go go throw in some requests? Yeah. Okay. So, um... That's easier than... I've got too much other things I need to do in such a short time. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Do you have a list of said requesty? They're in the link. Okay. Um, it's everything you... that is a ritual spell in there, so I don't gotcha. know how... You and I can go over that, because it does okay. take, you know, some of these spell scrolls will take a, a while to actually create. Right? Some of them are very expensive. So yeah, so so you be... and I can corroborate yeah. uh, over the yeah. coming week of, you know, which ones do you want to pick and, and you know, what's the cost going to be? What's the timeline going to be? Um, and we'll get it, you know, I'm sure we'll we'll get it to a scenario where it's like, all right, we'll go for these for right now and these we'll save for another time type situation. So, but mm -hmm. you take care of that this morning. Um, you find a couple of different locations that can meet your needs put in your requests put your down payments etc and then what for your day so i would have done that before the the bomb drop <laughs> and then bomb drop uh when i got back to troll skull i would have had a conversation with Sine. okay regarding the uh potentiality and intricacies of the alarm system okay sure uh in regards to we're not topside so it doesn't make sense for an alarm to ping sure. us uh so just trying to get an understanding of yeah so cna is like if the you know do, i think you know it's still probably a good idea to ping you all Right, so you're the I mean, owners, so you're aware, but also ping, you know, me, ping Agilon, for example. Um, maybe if I don't know if this is a thing that is done, but if we have a trusted member of like the watch or the guard that is willing, I don't know if they, you know, I don't think people will just want to randomly get pinged about shit that's not theirs, but you know. Maybe if you have that connection, that could be a thing. Someone that you trust to come check in on things or something like that. We, we may have a contact or two that yeah. are good. Mandius. Mandius! Okay. Um, Mandius time. Yeah, r really the big thing. I, I, I think the plan is that, that we're going to get that. Uh, I'd like to get that started b before we leave just with everything that's been going on that that seems like something that might not be a bad idea that's a lot of money though is is that something that we have to house here do we need a arcane vault at, is this something we need to to um cine will tell you that i mean there are a great many different businesses within the city um and temple complexes and things like that 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 deal in 
more money than your small tavern is dealing in. Even in this kind of situation, right, um, this is a large individual chunk of money and, and Sine, he's like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advertise that this is happening at the moment. Um, yeah, but I, goes against I don't purpose. think, I don't think we require anything outside of the normal means. Perhaps uh, we, so Sine, there, Sine has a, you all, you guys already basically have like a business account at the Exchequer. That's where Sine keeps the majority of the money that you guys leave okay. with the Lifted Spirits. And then there's, you know, 50 gold at any given time in the actual um, tavern itself, right? That type of shit, right? But the 600 or some odd that you guys have held for the tavern is in secure location, that, that type of situation. Um, so Sine will express that as long as things remain mostly in the same vein as they are now, he doesn't seem a problem with that. If things are to pick up, right, if you guys are in the future, you want to refine um, Troll Skull or you want to house more money there or more items there or if you're wanting to, like, um, increase the size of the manor or something like that, then there there might be issues in the future to consider, right? Like, do we invest in more um, more local means of securing um, treasure or items or, or what have you, that type of thing, right? Like a local vault, and like you, you were saying, like, right, some magical item or something like that that coexists as an alt or, or, or vault or something like that. That's outside of the realm of what Sine is especially experienced with, though. And he'll say he's not unwilling to, you know, look into it or anything like that, but he doesn't feel like it's necessary yet. Now, he will put a caveat saying after the events of the theft attempt, it's possible that maybe um, you guys want to look into some sort of like and and Cine will be like, I don't know, because Cine Cine is not super familiar with this type of stuff, but he'll be like maybe like a a pocket dimension or a wizard's vault or something, whatever those things are, to whatever secret shit you away got. your valuables so that there's less of a chance of of them being detected, or however that works, right? You know, again, Cine's. Cine's heard tales, but Cine's not experienced in this type of actual thing. But it's basically, like, yeah, what he's getting at is he's like, on. if you if you guys if you guys are super worried about it, you might look into finding a way to keep your shit from being magically detected. Yeah, it, you know. Yeah. Uh, so the big thing before we go to the palace is. Is there a limit to how many people can be pinged? That's kind of where I leave that off. Like what? What? I'll that? say, Cine. Cine. Um, he has basic answers. He says, in my conversations with Ukoria, she seemed to feel like, you know, there wasn't. It's not an infinite number, by all means, right? But the she seemed to express that the number would be large enough for a fair number of people to be involved without there being additional issues, right? I took that to mean that the four of you and a handful of other individuals, prob probably less than 10. But if we needed to add or remove people that would come with a small fee or... She seemed, she seemed confident that her ability to customize the enchantment depending on your needs would not be an issue good to know uh, i.e for the places that have this type of thing absolutely they have to get this shit tweaked once a month right <laughs> like because they done fired their steward or so and so is kicked out of the family or what have you you know so, so then i come back from the bomb drop <laughs> <laughs> So, so we're doing that. <laughs> okay. Um, 
yeah. So, so, uh, uh, I kind of look around. Like, yeah, the whole city's about to know, but I'm still paranoid about this shit. Uh, uh, you're, so the, Ezra, you're, you're yep. starting to have this conversation with Cine, right? Yep. Over in the corner, there's a strumming, right? And you, you see uh, a Nastus is over there kind of like fiddling around. And it's, you know, no. early morning. No. And a Nastus starts fun. to kind of like hum. And there's this little tune that he's trying <laughs> to, or that they're trying to play, right? Yeah. Um, they seem unfamiliar with it. They're trying to kind of like get it down. And while that's happening, they're humming these words about this battle on the sands of an arena and there's some like blood in the sand lyric right um and then you hear there's this little tag on the end of the slayers of the eye right oh, um oh, no. <laughs> and oh it anastas doesn't seem to be composing this they have a sheet in front of them that they are reading off of. <laughs> oh boy. I feel like this is getting a little out of control. <laughs> I don't. I fucking deserve to have songs written about me. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, That's... I love it. That tracks. The... Uh, so so Ezra puts the dots together and looks at Sine. Do, does Sine seem to already know? Sine is oblivious to the situation. Okay. Okay. So, so I explain what has just happened and why. Come again? Uh, yeah. It was close. But um, that happened. Um, but also it's now being heralded. So... He kind of like calms, calls over his shoulder, and he's like, "Guillaume, be prepared for a busy day." <laughs> Guillaume, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> he seems he seems nonplussed. He, it does not seem to bother him. He's like, "Okay, well, we're gonna be busier. Cool." I, I'm glad you're you're enjoying this, but this also draws other attention. Draws other attention. R right. Draws other attention to the people that defeated the most powerful crime lord in the city. Who aren't here most of the time. Yeah, but do you think anyone wants to paint a target on their back? True. Yes. Uh, well, maybe. I, I, possibly, <laughs> I guess. But nah. it, it might not be a bad idea to beef things up at least, at least for um, a short while. We we have additional funds to to work with if if necessary, and just in case eyes linger. I mean, so I will say, well, this um, place when we have less renown. Sorry, go ahead. Say what? Was that? I mean, worst place. Worst things have happened to this place when we've had less renown. So, um, so Cine will say, uh, Leandri's contract is up uh, on the morrow. I will probably just renew that. She seems to be doing good work. Um, and I'll touch base with Ajalon and see if he feels like we need to hire an additional um, person, at least for the time being, perhaps. And then with you, um, you know, investigating this or, or not investigating, um, entertaining the idea of this alarm system. Plus, I would assume, um, I mean, surely the surely the city's not going to make this proclamation and then just leave us out to dry. I, I would assume the city watch is going to be on alert, at least for the near future. Right? Right? You've lived here longer than I have. The Silver Lady is... <laughs> Well-liked for a reason. Uh, she's wise about these things. 
I'm I'm sure. It's fine. Still I'll send help. a missive to the local post just in case. Still doesn't hurt for us to to add a little cushion. No, I agree. Uh, if you want to uh, get the ball rolling on the uh, silent alarm, that probably should happen sooner rather than later. Um, so I think uh, Sine will tell you, uh, Okuria seems ready whenever. Um, it's just a matter of having the money. Billion, million dollars? Okay, gotcha billion million dollars oh oh my i don't remember how much it was so it's like, yes i think 2500 right something like that no, 5000 oh, is it 5000 for, oh. for the silent for the no, silent five... one right so the the 5000 is the upscaled one the the just the you know bank alarms is the 2500 yep gotcha i stick by the billion million billion million all right so um you know, Sine will say, um, all right, that sounds fine. I'll contact her and, and tell her that we're very interested and that um, we should be ready to get things started shortly. Appreciated. Uh, then I... Would I have any idea where to take this rubbing... From the Mad Goth statue. Any of the places that you've been to to uh, wizards, basically. Okay. Any of the places that you've been to to try to get scrolls previously. Okay. Uh, you go go around and see if anyone recognizes the spell, basically. And I will. That that will be my next thing to do today. Roll me an investigation check. Do my glasses count? No, they do not. Not in this particular instance. Hey, it doesn't matter. 24. Yeah. Uh, I just asked for the, that the question doesn't come up afterwards. No, yeah. yeah. Uh, just set the principle right there. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Uh, you get a hit on the second um, shop that you go into. An old gnomish wizard is able to identify the spell for you as... Um, and and so when I say this right, like, keep in mind that magic in the way that it's written in Faerun, it's not every single spell is an identical word-for-word -word copy of this is yeah. the fireball it's spell. Languages. Yeah, it's different languages, it's different dialects, it's different ways of writing phrases, and sometimes that can have odd twists on the magic as it's represented, right? Most of the magic, the, the magic that you see in in the handbook or we we hear about you know in our day-to-day -day lives are the generic versions of things right so this old gnomish wizard is like oh well this is a pretty strange arcane script my boy right like this is a weird one boy. you know i haven't seen this in a while mm -hmm. um but he identifies the spell uh and he kind of identifies the spell nonchalantly Right, like he doesn't care about the spell. Like that's whatever. I don't give a shit. Right, he's more interested in the script because it is Netherese, right? Ooh. Um, but the spell is negative energy flood. All right then. Which is a relatively <laughs> powerful. <laughs> you know kind of like mid-tier necromantic energy um spell i think it's i, I think it's necromantic it's fifth level it's fifth yeah. level necromancy yep yeah. so it's and designed to rubbing. it's not an actual scroll yeah yeah it's it's yeah so but that rubbing do, are you do you converse with this guy at all do you like oh, yeah. talk to him about the situation so he he posits right he sits there and he's like well it just doesn't make any sense to just have just a spell inscribed on a statue if it's not gonna do anything i bet there's a way to trigger it 
Yeah, try and trigger it. Well, the statue itself, not the rubbing, yeah, right? Yeah, the... No, the, the statue emits a negative energy flux. Right. I understand where this is <laughs> so going. I feel like I feel like Ezra has this moment where he's like, "Whoo!" Right, <laughs> like <laughs> bullet dodged. Whoo! Five d twelve necrotic damage. That could have done some damage. Yeah, oh, that's not that bad. Depends yeah, on how that would have killed, killed us. Depends on how how high it rolls. <laughs> yeah. And what state we were in when we went there, because we left there. Remember how weak we were when we were fighting the giants? No memory of that. No. Of course. No not. memory of that place. Oh, of course not. Uh, outside of that, dodged a bullet. That makes me happy. Um, outside of my research time, if I still uh, had time, uh, when you leave, right? Yeah. Um, the this little this gnomish wizard, um, asks you, uh, uh, you are you gonna keep that? How much is it worth? Ah, it's and he, he kind of like he kind of gives you this. Ah, it's just a rubbing of an ancient language I find interesting. Dear curiosity, really, no real value. Say ten gold. In is he is he definitely lowballing the shit out of this? You roll an insight check for me. No insight check needed. I'm gonna burn um, a snork point and re-roll that. Okay. <laughs> There's a little flare from my uh, vitiligo as I roll one. Better. <laughs> a very little flare, <laughs> a teeny tiny flare. Um, it <sighs> realistically, maybe, but probably not. It's not really valuable to you at all right like as you said it's not it's not an actual scroll you couldn't sell this to anyone but this guy specifically seems to be very interested in the netherese part of it right so it's more of like a curio or a curiosity type type situation for him he might be lowballing you on the value, maybe, but if it is, it's not by much. And if he is, and you press, he might he might be all like, well, fine, then, you know, that type of situation. So, it's up to you. You, you know, I, I was kind of thinking about framing it in my study, hanging it up. It's kind of got a cool style to the, as you said, the script is very interesting. I... I I, I guess for maybe twenty gold, I I I, I could part with it. Ooh, Double. twenty is pushing. Roll me a persuasion at disadvantage because twenty is double what he was. Oh! Wow! I'm gonna use a sorcery point to reroll. Wow! <laughs> That get is those, uh, get those out of the way here. Oh my that god. Is unfortunata. Holy shit. The 19. That is 19. All right. 19 he hems and haws um and you guys take a few minutes and you kind of go back and forth for a second yep. and you settle on 18 gold he talks you down okay. just a little bit but it's still a yep. fair amount more than what he was originally offering works for me I, i'm all about that negotiation yeah. yeah all right so um between all of your various activities that's eaten up a good portion of you you're basically now into the afternoon so what do you want to do with uh a work day or something like that Workday would be back to Calabash. Back to Calabash. All right. What you what you researching? What you what you doing? What you pushing for? Can I roll well for this? One? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, we'll continue down the Arcana train. All right, down the Arcana train. A twelve, and I'm gonna go ahead and use another sorcery point to reroll that. Oh, sweet My baby. God, man. Hey. A twenty-five. Okay. Um, 25. Yep, da, yep, da, yep, da. We've got. Is. One reduced, one reduced. 
That would be a... Uh, look at your stuff real quick. In a moment, though, don't mind me, just snooping. Things are changing. Right, gotcha. Uh, okay. I have too many things going on, y'all. Don't don't ever get like this. Take it. Take a. Uh, take Too a uh, page from me. Never, never get like this. I All just right. DM this weekend, and I had like ten notepads open <laughs> for different Fair. things. All right. Um. Wow. Okay. You are. You are, working through the book. Um. jotting down notes and you flip a page and when you flip that page all of the words on the next page scramble in front of you across the page itself there is a hum the letters lift themselves off of the page and begin to float and to hover in front of you, rearranging themselves into an arcane script in front of you, hovering in the air. And then there is a flash, and you feel this searing pain in your mind. And you blink. And I need you to roll I need you to roll a 1d2 for me. This is very fun. Flip a coin. One. Oh, one. Um, you blink. And as you blink that ear searing pain away, you realize that a spell was just seared into your mind. And you have now learned the programmed illusion spell. All right. Yeah, me too. Awesome. Isra, Isra, I'm magic now. Proud of you. Okay. All right, it's the 14th, right? Yeah, it's the 14th. I still need the components, I'm assuming. Um, yeah, so everything everything that would be normal to require to cast the spell is the same. Um, it's just now you have knowledge of being able to cast the spell. It is considered a known spell. Yep, absolutely. And does not count towards my sorcerer spell numbers, I'm guessing? Okay. Cool. Nerp. Oh, cool, cool. That's my day. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, as you all begin to... Well, not you all. Bones is in the heart of the mountain. And Ashes... Uh, Ashes, I would say, is, is actually... Wakes up, has dinner, and then goes to the Temple of the Moon. Yeah, so Ashes yeah, is actually probably. here right now. So this, this happens prior to your evening, Ashes. Um, but as Matashai, Ezra, and Ashes are kind of like doing their evening debrief um anastas is over in the corner playing a new song a rendition called blood on the sands of a group of heroes rescuing several prisoners and a woman from a minotaur in an underground arena uh in xanathar's lair um, and it's a rousing hit with the crowd in the tavern. Um, and without any prompting, after finishing, Anastas comes over um, and they're kind of grinning. And very quietly, they kind of like sidle up and they're like, 
So that's about you all, isn't it? No. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. Hey, I'm really good at being deceptive. Thank you realize you. this is uh, this is being played in every tavern across the city tonight. Yeah, I figured when you were reading a page as you were saying the words before. Well, one does not just ignore the newest song written by the voice of the dragon. That shit is hot. It What's the voice of the dragon? What? She what? is the, the most the popular... Uh, she's why the... Isn't it me? She is the bard of the season. It has been for the last two seasons. There was that one guy a little while back who was kind of making a splash, but then he disappeared. So. Oh, Zell. Yeah, he did. Oh, Tulip. That dude never left the ground. Get out of here. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> um, if you if you ask though, if you inquire, uh, the voice of the dragon, Anastas will uh, tell you is the voice of the dragon is a nickname given to a bard named, uh, and I'm horrible with pronunciation, so I apologize. But uh, Shea Shea Shung. Um, Wait, one more time. Shea Shung and definitely uh, an H in there somewhere. No uh -huh. H's actually. <laughs> what? Um, a lie, but, you know it. Uh, but they're a very they're a very popular bard, and they when they write stuff and when they write stuff, not every bard does this, right? It, it depends on on the person and and who they're operating with, but. A lot of the bards that work directly with new olems will spread their music, especially depending on what the music is, right? So um, there's kind of like an unofficial guild of bards, and so they'll pay to have access to new music that gets created, right? That way everyone gets to have fresh stuff consistently. Um, and Shia is just really popular right now, um, and released this new song that is really popular right now. So. Wonder where she got her source material. <laughs> what if it was the chick we rescued? I mean, it had to be one of them. Anyways, anything else for your evenings? Or is uh, it... I'm kind of brain fucked at this point, so I'm not leaving the bar. <laughs> sure, fair <laughs> enough. All right. Um, so, uh, you spend an evening together, chatting, eating, drinking, eventually uh, ending up back in your beds. There's a dome. Um. <laughs> Rest is had. And it is the morning of the 15th. On the morning of the 15th, as you all are breaking your fast down in the Lifted Spirits, a package arrives for you all. It's just addressed um, to the owners of... Yeah, I, the it wouldn't be Lifted Spirits. It would be the, to the owners of Troll Skull Manor. Um... And there's a little box with a note attached to it. Okay. Ezra takes it. Okay. Um, the note reads thusly. I hope you're this dead. Is... <laughs> you're, you're dead. You're fucking dead. <laughs> I hope this letter finds you in good health during this abysmal winter. I want to send my thanks for the aid you offered my son. He assured me that you would appreciate this more than monetary compensation. You have my deepest gratitude. M. Casifax. P.S. I hope you will remain circumspect with the knowledge of events involving my son. Do we remember I'm who this I'm looking for that last name through my notes. Is, it, is that the slaver? 
A slaver? Remember. Yeah, remember the one that Azeroth killed because he was a slaver? No, oh, that was uh, Ra House Rosnar, I believe. Mm. Yeah. Son, son. Ass effects. Um... Wait, no, that was a grandson in Skullport, right, that we saved. Yeah. That was a guy's oh. grandson. Yeah. Within the box. What's in yeah, the box? What's in the box? What's in the box is <clears throat> a small um, satchel made from a very fine, dark leather. Is there a tag? No. Then I identify it. It's a bag of holding. It's a sweet, blowy epi box. Ezra straps the bag of holding to his belt. You already have a bag of holding. <laughs> no, it I do not. not. He Look has off. a handy haversack. Which has a quarter of the carrying capacity split between three pockets. Very nice, Jeremy. Um, and I believe that is all the news I have for this morning. So, um, what's up? Ooh, ooh, let me double check. Yeah, what's up? Who's up next? What are we doing? I'll go. Back I to Zach. Easy. Bones. I have. I'm gonna have a work day. He's working. Put me at eight of ten. Eight of I, ten. Then I just want to go hang out with Willow. You get interrupted um, a couple times while you are working. Not like oh. not like bad things, but like the goblins get curious about what you're working on, what you're doing. And they think it's really cool because you're in there with like these astral fucking implements and they're floating around and like you can like put a hand out and be like you can think of I need this bone saw and it'll just like up apparate from across the room and just kind of like fly into your hand type shit. Right. So there's there's somewhat yeah, when cool. you're working, there's somewhat um a bit of a revolving door of goblins just kind of like watching you work on the occasion. Um, if you allow them to, if you shut the gates or the doors, then that is a different thing. No, I, I, I allow it. Of course. Yeah. They can, they can, you know, learn, they can do stuff. Not very many of them seem interested in learning. It's more of like a show to them. <laughs> there are Whatever, a few, watch, there are a few people care. who are like, Oh, that's cool. I could do that, you know, that type of thing. But um, for the most part, it's more of a more of a show. All right. So fine, success fine. on the uh, or moving forward on the progress. And then you said other half of the day you want to go visit Willow. OK, I just want to. Yeah, I just want to go hang out. <laughs> That's what I have. I have visit oh, and man. hang out with Willow. That's looking what I have on forward, my list. Looking forward to being a fly on the wall for this one. Do you make your intentions known of where where you're going? Oh yeah. So uh, as you're heading up, right? Um, Thresher will ask if he can. Okay. We'll check. Thresher. 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 I believe it's a he. Thresher. I believe Thresher is. Identifies as male. Thresher is uses he him pronouns. Yes. So Thresher asks, you know, like, uh, hey boss, can I bring a couple people? We need more dirt. And you know, I saw a batch of you know, of uh, fucking X mushroom killer DD white peralt. I don't know, whatever. Like he he named I, I don't I do not know all the mushrooms. He names off blue tongue and and a couple of other things that um he knows as safe, harvestable mushrooms um that he wants to pick up. Um so he asks if they can accompany you and then while you're in the tower with Willow, they'll just go do their thing. And then what yeah, do that's you cool. Yeah, okay, so you give them the yay, and while that is happening, because they need like a second to get ready, um, Oz and Big Beak catch wind that you are going to visit Willow, um, and then they start begging to come as well. 
I mean, yeah. You're not. Don't you go and hang out with there often? Uh, well, I mean, it's been like I I went there the other day, but it it it's only been like three days or four days uh, <laughs> since you. Yeah, time time's weird for me. Sorry, time, yeah, time is wibbly on. wobbly, right? Like it hasn't been very long since you asked about that whole thing. Um, so Oz has been back without you, but is you know trying to trying to crash on your party as well yeah 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 whatever okay so there's a little party of goblins that adventures up with you thresher and his gang go off to collect dirt and mushrooms when you get to the willow wood uh and then oz and big beak uh accompany you to willow willow's tower i almost said willers willers tower hey um, willer <laughs> where you are greeted by Hallis tree and uh chris Chrisan, um and big beak get into um some territorial shenanigans but nothing you know nothing bad comes of it or anything like that oh, they like each other yeah, i know it. they don't really seem to like each other they actually really seem like they want to bite the fuck out of each other but but chris Chrisan is like never never aggressive never attacks anything unless willow is like go right you know sick um sick it yeah right so when spending time with willow do you have an agenda or are you legitimately just here to spend some time with willow and Hallis tree and company no i'm just here to hang out man because it's like we're always using her so it's like figure we could like be friends fair enough fair enough Right. Roll a. You can. You can. Are you trained in persuasion? I think so. I mean, he's a cat, so. Yeah, what I'm a you... cat, so. His cat. <laughs> so you're asking me to give you a negative? That's that's what you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not per trained in persuasion at okay. all. Just roll me a, a general charisma check then. Oh, okay. So the same roll. Okay. Yeah, probably. Oh, 14. Not good for me. You have a pleasant day, right? It doesn't really amount to much. Um, Willow kind of like occasionally leaves. Hallis Tree plays host. Um, uh, but, you know, Willow is here and there. And, and um, there is one point where she takes you back. And this is the first time that you've been in um, a room other than the just kind of like throne room, the crystal throne room in the base of the tower. She takes you back to a little map room um, where she shows you the kind of like general layout of the immediate area of the Willow Wood. Um, and uh, she doesn't have like a real goal or anything like that. And the conversation kind of like stifles about halfway through and she gets a little weird and she's like i'm gonna go take care of stuff and then she kind of like leaves you with hallis tree for Whoa, like can 30 I come? minutes what are we gonna, what are we gonna nope, do she's now? gone she's just fucking she's just fucking jets right she's she's audi 9k um but she comes back and she's amicable and and it is mostly fine um there is Oz spends some time with her here or there, and you can tell um, that Willow is attempting to teach Oz the druid craft cantrip, right? Mm. Trying to get Oz more in tune with nature and and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's clear there is it gets to the point to where there's some frustration on Willow's part, right? Because uh, Oz is a little unfocused Good. as Goblin, right? You know? Um, <laughs> so has trouble focusing for too terribly long on, on a particular thing. But uh, you can see the environment, you being very relaxed, and you kind of like, you know, pair up with Hallis Tree, and, and Hallis Tree is very zen. Um, and it provides this conducive environment where Willow doesn't really... It, it, she... It seems like she wants to snap, but she doesn't, right, basically, right? It's it's a pleasant enough atmosphere that she keeps her cool and she she spends time with you and, and just needs to piece out every 
you know, hour or so to have alone time so that she's not, like, driven up the wall. She has to go wall. scream in the forest. <laughs> right. I mean, she has a scream room. <laughs> she, has, she has a break thing room, right? Um, but uh, it does seem to have a positive effect on your relationship. Sweet. Okay. Um, if that is the end of yours, let's let us go um to Ashes Ezra and Matashtai, as you all are ending your your little escapade with trying to figure out who the fuck this letter is from, and oh cool, new bag, right? Um, do you guys really haven't been able to identify who the letter's from? I can't. I, it's, I can't. I, don't, I have not <laughs> been able love to. It. I fucking love it. I, I'm trying to think of all the the people we saved. And I love it. Anyways, m moving on, right? Um, your, your, oh, fuck, who the fuck is this kind of like moment is interrupted as there is a piercing shriek from outside and up, right? And there's a bit of a commotion and uh, you realize the area around the tavern is being vacated. Like, en masse? Oh, right, Griffin. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's oh, my Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> right. So Matashtai pops out, and you can see there is indeed a griffin that is is hovering down, and you can see the griffin's face is their eyes are covered, and there is a big kind of like muzzle over their beak at the moment, um, and it's way bigger than like a, a muzzle would need to be. Um, and you see Mandius on the back of the griffin, um, and he calls out to you as, as he sees. He says, hurry up, gotta go. Can't stay down here for very long. If she smells horse flesh, she'll go into a rampage. Okay, I've run in a half on. Later, guys. <laughs> what a terrible Make downside. Sure you bring him back by seven. <laughs> There's a reason they fly above That's the city, early, not Dad. on the city. <laughs> So, Mel's horse flesh <laughs> goes into rampage. So, um, Mandius will uh, explain to you that this is um, a issue that the Griffin Calvary has to deal with, right? Uh, griffins, being naturally wild beasts, have a very strong hunting um, mindset. So, Particularly with horse flesh, they can be very, very um, persnickety, especially if they get agitated, right? If they get agitated and they smell horse flesh or they're, they're hungry and they smell horse flesh, they kind of, it takes a lot to keep them from going ham. So that would be an animal handling role at disadvantage. Yeah. So I that's actually what the, the crazy, the, uh, in the, the uh, centaur wars. What the fuck is it? It's, um, so the, the muzzle isn't actually a muzzle per se. What it is is it's stuffed with herbs, right? Um, to help like a, mask like the mask, scent. Like and Dr. Basically, mask. yeah, it's it's to help prevent the griffin from smelling horse flesh. And, and the griffin cavalry use that to kind of like maneuver their way around the city without, without too terribly much of an issue. Um, but they are very cautious about it because when bad shit happens, it's it goes real bad, right? Um, it's not unheard of for people to lose horses to the Griffin Calvary. It happens a couple times a year. Um, so. Not Nelly. <laughs> so anyways, Matashtai, you get to ride on the back of a Griffin and you realize you may be underdressed for this. Oh my coldest shit. It's it's deep winter. Mandius is bundled up like a an Eskimo. It's 
fucking cold. And it's cold outside, and you're like, I know it's cold outside. It's fine. I'm used to the cold. That's okay. No big. And you realize you're used to the cold. You're not used to the cold through the air at 50 miles an hour. It's what the shit, man. Is why didn't you tell me to dress warmer? <laughs> he laughs hysterically at you. Um, by the so time tall. so you he does this big circuit over the city of Waterdeep, and it is beautiful. You get to see the city from above. Um, all of the different like um, terrain features and the the different ele- elevations, the multitude of the the statues, right? Like the the walking statues of Waterdeep. Um, the, the massive, um, like the, the inclined rise of the castle ward up the side of Mount Waterdeep and then all the way up to the peak top area where, where you can actually see the Griffin, right? Which is another one of the walking statues that is perched on the peak of Mount Waterdeep, um, where it where it landed the last time it had been awoken um and you make your way through all of this into a courtyard that's very i mean if you want to visualize it it's it's very kind of like um care morhen kind of like representation there right mm-hmm. it's it's a fortification on the side of or or up towards the top side of a mountain it's covered in snow it's it's very old um, it's well kept, but it's obvious that um, it is well kept by a small number of people, right? This isn't this isn't one of the palaces or one of the guard barracks or anything like that. The Griffin Calvary is a small, relatively elite force, um, and there's a lot of Griffins up here. Holy shit! <laughs> like just coming in flying in you when you're flying around when you're walking when you're on when you're in the city of Waterdeep right you occasionally hear the Griffin Cavalry and if you're looking up and looking for them you will see them while you're flying around up there you see half a dozen patrols across the city at any given time right um like they are on the spot they are working they are not playing around someone flying into Waterdeep right is gonna have a bad time uh <laughs> like like legitimately yeah. someone you you realize these guys are they are very serious about what they are doing um Especially if they're on a horse don't yeah. fly it on a horse on a horse on a horse so um more screech i guess than a shriek anyways um you arrive at the peak top area. You are set down in a courtyard, and very shortly you find yourself in front of five young adults. Young adults. Um, and Mandius explains to you that they get recruits very early because the Griffins, and this isn't all, this doesn't happen all the time, but Generally speaking, the Griffin's um, imprint on birth. So they train very young recruits. Have it's it's almost kind of like if um if any of you have read the Dragon Riders of Pern, right? It's almost kind of like that oh, style yeah. of, of scenario, mm-hmm. right? Like they, they train uh, them as young years. adults, I've heard a long time. right? They, they <laughs> train them as young adults. And then when the Griffins are hatched, they kind of imprint on a person and it's not as strict as kind of like the dragon riders of Pern, right? Scenario. It's, it's, it's uncommon for a Griffin to just die if they lose their rider, but there is a strong emotional bond between um, the Griffin and the Rider, and and it just works better in that kind of situation, right? Um, so these are young individuals. They're not expected to get a Griffin for another year or so, and even then, they'll still be the Griffin will take, you know, a while to grow up, a couple of years to grow up, and actually be a full grown Griffin. So these are these are almost kids right like um young teenagers 
that Mandius has dropped you kind of, kind of just like, been like, well, here they are, claps you on the shoulder, have fun, and just kind of walks off, <laughs> expecting you to teach them hand-to-hand -hand combat. Damn, he takes you to the prom and then just walks off? Kinda. Bro. Whatever, I dance without him. <laughs> that uh, that nice. shoulder's colder than the ride up there. Damn. Very nice. Uh, um, yeah, well, I, I jump into it. Um, okay. I, I, yeah. I would say, like, I kind of introduce myself. Uh, hey, everybody. Um, my name's Matt. Um, I've been working with the city guard for a bit now. Um, I'm quite familiar with uh, close quarters combat, and uh, I think for the next two days, uh, I'm gonna be teaching y'all. Uh, one of them, one of them, immediately kind of like rolls her eyes. It's a this young uh, tiefling girl with uh, bluish, bluish, purplish skin, right? She kind of rolls her eyes and she says, two days. We're supposed to learn from you for two days." What's that going to accomplish? Punch you well. in the face. <laughs> <laughs> what is Matashtai's teaching style? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to I'm gonna show you the basics in two days. And then after I'm done exploring Undermountain, I'll come back and check on you. And we'll see where you're at. Ooh, okay, okay. You dropping, you dropping like, exploring oh, Undermountain shit. Roll me an intimidation check. Ooh, okay. with advantage given recent events. Okay. Oh, yeah, intimidate okay. those children. I think I closed <laughs> I mean, sometimes. Hopefully <laughs> they wore their brown pants. Alright, it's not like drill sergeant scream intimidate at them. <laughs> it's more like sense of presence, right? <laughs> Sorry, it's taking me a minute to load it back up. Apparently, I closed the wrong window. You are. So while we're waiting, right, there is a young uh, half-orc woman, a young tiefling woman, the one that's kind of like sassing you right now. Uh, there is a... You almost don't notice her at first. She's so small, uh, a halfling girl. Um, there is... And then there are two humans... Um, both of them vaguely masculine in nature. Um, one identifies himself as Hank, uh, and the other as Mord. But they seem to be some sort of a pair. Okay, I'm not very intimidating. Advantage. Is his name Hink Hill? Advantage. His name is Probably Hink advantage. Buckman, okay. actually. That's fucked up. Just be Hank Hill. It's not Slightly Hank, better. it's no. Hink. I know what I'm you said, average. I know what I said. A 15 is not bad. You, I mean... Again, you're not yelling drill sergeant. You're not trying to scare the piss out of them, right? You're trying to presence them. You're trying to, like, oh, I adventure in Undermountain. Thank you very much, right? You know, like, kind of like, a, and, and there's a, there's, there's a, all right, kind of like, a, okay. And she shuts up. And... The others are kind of like, okay, this guy's kind of cool, right? Um, now what happens? What do you do? Um, well, uh, first thing I was always taught uh, back in the Hearth Guard is to uh, never practice on cold limbs. So let's get warmed up, and I uh, take them through a warm-up kata. Uh, the That's little cool. halfling... Party, yeah. um, Warms up to you very quickly and is immediately like, "What's the hearth card?" And you're just going, no, no, no. "What's that? No, no, no. What's that? No, no, no. What's that?" It just starts grilling you um, on anything and everything that you will answer if you do answer. Um, I try to weave my answers in with her doing things correctly. Okay. Gotcha. You, you got to do things correctly to get an answer. It's the reward. Oh, there Understood. you go. That Pavlovian okay. draining. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reward. I feel. I feel. Okay, cool. Um, Warm up happens, and then you, you start taking them through katas. Right? Is that yep. what you said? 
Okay. Yeah, so yeah, warm up with the katas, and then after that, um, start kind of moving through. What what do they know? Like, what how where what, what is my baseline with these people? Okay. And then um, just kind of moving into basic moves. You realize I, they don't didn't... know much, right? Like some of them are like, I can throw a punch, right? It's these are young teenagers. They they know very little. No. And. Yeah. And okay. they will even tell you, right? Like they haven't gotten this is this is the first of their combat training. They won't let them near the weapons until they get up to snuff in this stuff, basically. Gotcha. So oh, you're actually cool. the first first smack at combat training that they have. Perfect. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, right. Well. Up. Well, you can't <laughs> do it wrong because they don't know what wrong is. That's <laughs> Uh, then, yeah, like, I try to go through the most basic of basic stuff, like, trying to, uh, get them focused on their stances, keeping their, uh, low center of gravity. Okay. Keeping them quick on their feet, moving around a lot, uh, surveying what's going on, et cetera, et cetera. All right, sure. Push them um, over. Roll me... What do you want to roll? Um, How, what skill do you think you best utilize in this instance to teach these kids um, as much as you can in the short amount of time as you can? This is like Animal training handling. the villagers to defend themselves from the bandits type scenario. I'll do animal handling. Animal <laughs> handling? <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Ab absolutely. I'm 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 super down with this. Okay. Animal handling. <laughs> Fucking twenty. <laughs> All right. 20. Not a, a natural. Yeah, dirty twenty. Not a natural. That's hilarious. Okay. Um, it goes. It goes surprisingly well, and you realize as you're doing it, it goes surprisingly well because you are using very basic ideas, right? Just. Focusing on stances, focusing on your center of gravity, basic movement, um, very basic, not even like getting to punches necessarily or anything like that, but just more like understanding where your body is and what you want to do with your body, right? Um, you realize you are not as alone throughout this process as you might have originally thought that you would be. Um, throughout this about four or five hours, several different individuals come by to check on you or, or happen to be in the area or come flying over. And you realize it's almost kind of like it, it's synced up. It's um, every 15 minutes or so there is a member of the Griffin Calvary that is in the area, kind of like seeing how things going. And each time... They all kind of like leave, just kind of like, yeah, yeah okay. Kind of sure like nodding around. Are alive. As, you, as you get closer to the end of this period, and you take breaks in between, right? Like you're not exhausting the kids or anything. You're not exhausting yourself. It's cold out here, right? Um, but as you get towards the end of this, the kind of like later half, there are more and more instances where more and more of the Griffin Calvary are hanging out for longer and kind of like not just making sure everything is kosher but are actively watching and listening to you the right Lord in the water oh, yeah. and you you get this you get this <laughs> at like the last like 20 minutes or so right like there is a group of people um these three guys over off to one side that have been watching for about 30 minutes or so right but you you catch them um out of the corner of your eye when they think you're not paying attention or when you're busy with the kids you check you catch them kind of like getting into these stances and like ask, am I doing it right? Like, is like, right? Like conversing with each other, kind of like comparing themselves to what you're doing. Um, so. Oh, that's cute. Well, seems like a success. Um, Animal yeah. handling. Your fledge, the fledglings <laughs> is what they are called, right? They're called fledglings. Um, 
they acclimate to your teaching style quickly. Um, there's a little bit of sass still here or there, especially from the tiefling um, Zashida. Um, but uh, they seem to have a good time and they respect you. Um, and it doesn't take them long to realize that you know what it is that you're doing, especially since even though a lot of this stuff is very simple, it's still very tough, right? Um, standing in the cold in the right stance for a duration of any real duration of time is a pain in the ass. So they realize very quickly on that you're not playing around. This is real shit. <laughs> um, but they also can kind of like see the effect of what's happening. So they buy into it relatively quickly. Um, and it's a good session. Um, you realize that two of these is barely going to scratch the surface. And you you already knew that to begin with, yeah. right? Um, but another good session like this could be a good foundation for these fletchlings. At the end of it, Mandius, who had not, has not been present the entire time, um, shows back up, um, looks around like he doesn't have any idea how things have gone. Um, the kids are dog tired. He looks at you and says, all right, looks like you did good. You ready to go? Uh, sure am. Let's get going. Get you on his griffin, flies you back down over the city, um, takes you on a magic carpet ride, and then drops you off. As he drops you off, he hands you a purse, and he says, we're authorized to uh, pay for the teaching of the fledglings. Uh, it's not a crazy amount. Plum is pretty... Well, I mean, he lives in a hole in the side of the mountain, so he doesn't really do much with the money. Um, but... Is what it is. See you tomorrow. It is a purse with 15 gold in it. Damn, Sweet. sick, bro. It's time to become a full time teacher. If there was a market for it, or, I mean, <laughs> you could do it. You, just, you, had, you need to, like, you you need to market your services across the city of Waterdeep. Like, get in with the nobles and be like, I can teach you self-defense classes, right? Like, <laughs> you know, it'd be great. Off your security detail bill. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, what else for your day? That was your morning. Um, Sorry, I got a little in involved there. I thought that was fun. Thing I was going to do... Um, I... Wanted to get a little bit more persuasion time in. Okay, off to New Olam's and the uh, the um, workings with the masked man. On my way there, I'm gonna try and get a missive over to Laron and see if I could get some of her time in the next day or two. Okay, gotcha. Missive sent. We'll see how that goes. Um, pa, 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 pa. To, to layer all. Okay. Um, time with the masked man. This time, uh, he takes you to a, um, basically like a choir practice. And he has you do vocal exercises for the majority of the time. All right, it's, your voice it's, it's really weird. It, it, he he explains to you like he's not he's not ad obtuse about it or anything like that. He explains to you right that he wants you to become more relaxed and more in control of your own vocalization so that you are more confident. Um, in the conversations or the situations that you're in. Also, this tends to be, um, they'll explain, this tends to be a, a situation where some people can be not uncomfortable, but like it's almost akin to like public speaking, right? So like some people have a rough time with it. So he's like, you know, this tends to be a good thing for people to push past. So. All right. I uh, give it my all. Give it your all. Roll and, uh, me. Throw up the persuasion. That beautiful persuasion. 
Bam. Ooh, my God, you cannot fail. Bam. All right, another Ooh. success. The dice are hot tonight. It's too bad yeah. we're not fighting. Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, I'm gonna crush you guys when you go back into the dungeon. Next next uh, time we fight, it's gonna be two. Two. Oh, fucking love one. It. Okay. Oh, you mean me last week. <laughs> sometimes it do be that way. Yeah, okay. sometimes that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Alright. Um another successful <laughs> time. Uh, another twenty-five gold to the masked man. You're getting there. You're you're a third of the way to being trained in persuasion. Um your luck can't hold out. You'll fail eventually. Or oh, can it? I hope it does. Fingers crossed for <laughs> you. <laughs> so, um, there is that, uh, and that's pretty much the rest of your day. Um, yes. Okay. You said in the evenings we can still like work on our like talismans and stuff like that, or yeah, is that, you, like... you guys can. Okay. You will always have an opportunity to do your. Whether it's bones crafting or talisman or calabash research or um, potion making, you always have an opportunity to do that. Unless you're like, I fill my 18 hour day with this activity, then I'll be like, okay, then you, you're not going to have a chance to do your other shit. But other, other than that, you're fine. Um, okay, then, so. Yeah. You do the stuff. Ezra! What you doing, my Hello. man? Oh boy. Uh, I go back to looking for ways to parlay with the stone giants. Back to the I font of knowledge. High priority. Okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, roll me that history check. Let's see how it goes. Twenty-three. Twenty-three is pretty good. So, you head back to the Font of Knowledge, and you are intent on picking up where you left off, right? Um, trying to figure out, you know... Uh, you you found out a lot of lore about giant kin about the ordning a lot of a lot of really interesting stuff. In fact, that's probably part of the problem is you got into too much too interesting, interesting stuff and you got distracted, <laughs> right? Cool. Um, and you're like, okay, that's not gonna happen today. I've got a I got a plan. I got a clear thing. I'm gonna go look at these three things that I had from my notes and and we're gonna make it from there. So you begin going about this process and. You're doing okay, you're making all right headway, but that knowledge just doesn't seem to be written down in a book per se. Um, and it starts to, you're getting to the point to where it's about, you know, the middle of your research period and you still haven't hit anything that is a good answer um, or an answer that you feel is gonna be a legitimate solution to your current problem. As you are are kind of like trying to surmise some of your notes and and try to get an idea of where to go next, you are approached by a a I'm not sh sure. You probably have seen an individual like this before, but very rarely, um, she has a light greenish hue, almost greenish yellowish hue to her skin. Um, she has this dark modeling, um, almost kind of like weird patches of freckles across her, her face primarily. Um, it takes you a second, but this woman is Gith. Um, in descent. Yeah. And she is dressed in um, very yeah. simple robes that are very similar in style to the robes that a lot of the acolytes of Ogma, who run the temple, the font of knowledge, wear. So she, she seems like she belongs in this location. And she kind of walks up to you and she says, 
You're in here pretty regularly. You're Ezra, aren't you? Uh, I, I am. I, I don't think we've met. Uh, what's your name? She holds out her hand and she says, I am Bishop Vithka. Bishop. The bishop is one of the heads of Ogma's priesthood. Oh, boy. It's a pleasure. <laughs> he says, you, you seem to be studying in quite some earnest. Might I ask what you are researching? Sure. I, I, me and a, a couple of uh, compatriots have been delving into the Undermountain. A couple uh, of compatriots and I. Yeah, yes, yes, of course. She, My apology. <laughs> she hits you with the grammar police, and she does it very, like, she does it very, like, smoothly, And you, but you get in that immediate sense, right, like, this very librarian-esque yep. lady that's just, like, not yep. coming at you or anything like that, but she, yep. she yep. absolutely is going to correct you. Yeah, no, the bishop caught me off guard. <laughs> um, uh, my compatriots and I uh, are uh, venturing uh, into the Undermountain, and we've made some progress, but we seem to have hit a minor roadblock uh, with a family of stone giants. Hmm. And the first encounter didn't go as uh, well as we would have hoped, and things are far from amicable. Uh, and uh, I'm just hoping to find a way to... Uh, parlay and give ah. the opportunity to. So you are researching their history, their culture, etc., in the hopes of finding something worthwhile to bridge that gap. I indeed, yes. Interesting. Unfortunately, uh, the last time it turned to violence, and we we don't want to kill unnecessarily, and. Do you have a moment? Uh, I do. If you if you have any, uh, uh... she turns and she crooks her finger and kind of like motions for you to follow her. And as you do, uh, or as she does that, right, you can see the the inner collar of her robe kind of like opens just ever so slightly, and you can see a little pin on the inside of it, a pin that you are very familiar with. Um, as a particular faction indicator. <laughs> um, and, and that type of movement is, you are familiar, is an obvious movement, right? These pins Identify. are intended to be yep. hidden. People keep them hidden unless there's a reason, right? Yep. So, um, she, you know, asks for you to follow. And then she, she kind of like takes you through the stacks and the font of knowledge is just this vast library, but it's also got these repository rooms with scrolls and tablets and various bits and bobs. Um, and it, she takes you into a, not like a restricted section or anything like that, but she takes you into a section um, that is more housed by a lot of older stuff. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of this stuff is in very obscure languages or is in not the greatest um, um, form, right? But none of it is is the really like dangerous stuff or the stuff that could be destroyed, right? It's all still handleable, um, etc. Um, and she comes up to an individual who is studying at a desk, and this individual has basically dark gray skin, the texture of stone, uh, but is, you know, your height. Mm -hmm. uh, and she walks up to this person and speaks with them quietly, privately for a moment. Uh, and then the person nods and then points over towards a door. And then the bishop uh, comes back to you and she says, I have been informed that one of the pizzas we keep on hand 
Uh, that is a bit strange in its operation. Uh, has refreshed recently, and no one is intending on using it. I cannot promise you that it will provide a solution to your problem, but it is possible. If you would follow me. She leads you over to that door, opens it into a musty room, and again, there's dozens of little shelves, mostly filled with old scrolls, and she says, please don't touch anything. These are a bit on the more delicate side. And she walks you over to a mirror set in a big stone frame, and it's kind of got this odd design, almost as if it's kind of like the footprint of a big creature is the stone frame and then the mirror is set into it right not like a foot footprint but more like a like a dinosaur style footprint like a brachiosaurus or you know something like that i, I, don't, I don't know something off the top of my head but it's, doing, it's, yeah. it's like a it's <laughs> it's like a weird footprint right um more but... of a trunk or is it a theropod or yeah the first one <laughs> Don't give me that look, Mitchell. <laughs> Plan forever. So she she brings you over to this, and um, she sits you in front of it, and she says, this mirror is a connection, a very strange connection, that, well, there's a reason why we're willing to just allow someone to utilize it. It, it very rarely has a... Valuable purpose. <laughs> I, I should explain. Uh, this mirror connects to a place, a repository for knowledge, hidden away within the Underdark. It's a place known as Graven Hollow. Hey, you know. Jesus. <laughs> when activated, the individual activating it may ask a question. The keepers of Graven Hollow might, key, key word here being might, deign to answer that question. The only issue with that is, is that the keepers of Graven Hollow have different specialities. One records the past, one records the present, and one records the future. You must direct your question to one of them, and only one will answer. Which is why this particular item is not terribly useful frequently also they can be very vague and a little squirrely so again i don't know that this is gonna be of any real use to you i'll be honest i've been trying to find a use for this thing for about 20 years now i have yet to have anyone get anything valuable out of it it's kind of an obsession of mine at this point. I'm sure you understand. Oh, yes. I, I have plenty of projects. <laughs> like recognizes like. <laughs> She's accidentally throwing that shade. Oh, boy. One question. Directed at past, present, or future. Where is my phylactery? Do you need some time? Get that. <laughs> no, I, I think I'm there. Ask the future keeper where your phylactery is. Why would you need to find your own phylactery? Um, oh, has it so been taken? You obviously, oh, so okay, you know you the best place to put it. Oh, all right, all right, all right, all right. That's fair. Where did I put my... It's like, where did I put my car keys? Similar logic. Fair enough. 
<laughs> uh, I I step to the mirror. All right. And I speak out. The bishop steps off to one side. Um, there a uh, it's just a, a an intent activation. Okay. okay. Uh, to the future. And beyond. What gift do I offer to the stone giants on the seventh floor of Undermountain that allows us an opportunity to parlay? The mirror shimmers, and you see this face and, like, begin to appear through the shimmering. Um, and this, uh, there's this stone giant from profile, right, that kind of, like, looks over and just, and, like, squints at the mirror. Just, this thing's still on. And then it says, uh, I am Ustova. <sighs> Trying to formulate specifically for that question. Um, the stone giant says you require no gift and shall give none but in time the memories that they fail to keep will be restored to them. Um, but we can't remember shit. Got and the, the, the mirror kind of like shimmers. And, and as it's shimmering away, right, the giant Ustova, you can, you can hear them mumbling. Need to get that thing shut off. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bow at the mirror, whether or not it can acknowledge me. In sure. Time. Uh, the bishop is standing there, kind of like. <laughs> Was that useful? Is that useful? I don't know if that's useful or not. Yeah. Yes. I think so. I can count that as a win. I not think unuseful. so. Uh, it, it is more useful than I have gotten thus far. She seems slightly disappointed. She's like, I don't know. It's less... Less of affirmation than I was really hoping for. I mean, we're dealing with time here. That that's you're never gonna get definitive responses because anything can change. Oh, we've gotten definitive responses before. They've just not been useful definitive responses before. Well, I guess use is in the eye of the beholder. All that. That is true. This this helps in my blight. Well, I'm glad you feel it's a success at least. One one uh, done, many more to go. Indeed. Well, I can always try next month. I I appreciate the kind gesture. If there's compensation or recompense for this offer, <laughs> she kind of like wonders off. You realize she was wholly focused on like, oh, maybe I can get this guy to use the thing and it'll succeed. Oh well, yeah, maybe next time. But well, she's well, just thanks. gone. Thanks. <laughs> uh, a, a true student of the yeah, audience. absolutely, <laughs> just one hundred percent fueled by her obsession, and then she's outie. Oh, I I I feel that flight. All right, so... Um, and that took the better part of my day, so then Calabash would be my wrap-up. Okay, gotcha. Calabash, wrap-up. Roll... What are, you, what, what are we doing? 
What? I feel like I can get more out of Arcana, or should I switch it up? What Let's happens up now? We haven't touched it yet, so we're going to start with history. A ten. And I'm going to go ahead and use a Sork point for a twenty-five. Twenty-five. You are mulling through Alabash's tome. Um, taking notes. Most of it's gibberish. You, you take notes. Take notes. Take notes. Go back. Cross out notes, realizing that they're fucking nothing, and that you hate this person, and why are they... This is... Ugh. I met this person. Right? If you could know something about Undermountain from a more geographical standpoint, what, you know, where is this thing? What's the name of this, th this level, right? Like those types of things, right? What would you what would you want to know? I'm sure there's a dozen things here. I <laughs> know. <laughs> the problem is what's the most Urgent. Yeah, what is what is useful to know uh, now? I, I think at this point is learning more about the Slither Swamp. Okay. The eighth level. That's our that's likely our next stop, so Do you have a specific line of inquiry or are you just looking for general knowledge about the Slither Swamp? Uh Preferably whether or not there is a portal from a higher level that leads into the Slither Swamp. Ooh. You find just suddenly, right? Gibberish notes, gibberish notes, gibberish notes, like you're trying to crack a code, right? Mm -hmm. And you're reading through nothing and then you suddenly get to a paragraph that legitimately just says the stone key used on the lost levels will get you to the slither swamp. Bro, I called that one. Confirmed but it though. confirms it like it's it, it straight it confirms it in like no no um like no quibbling or anything like that it, it just like straight up says that and then the next like two paragraphs are like the 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 <laughs> the, 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 the it's come it's insane right that's really oh, funny What's worse is when you go back to see if you there was something else or you misread it or something like that, that I'm passage is not there anymore. No. Dumb book. It's a dumb book. It is <laughs> a dumb, dumb book. book. Um, right. I will throw this out there. I think um, your 25 is good enough for this particular instance to count as a double, as long as it's another similar no. situation. So you get one more question. Keep it, keep it small though. Small. The, the the only other major thing I would want to know is if there are any notable major factions on the floor. Uh, preferably House Avrindar is is a flag. Okay. Um. Mm -hmm. You again, okay. right? Like you're okay. like. You're starting to get this weird sensation where you maybe you're starting to figure out the book. So you you kind of like go through and you're like, okay, I'm going to take notes on this thing. I'm going to take notes on this thing. But you start to kind of concentrate on your question 
right? And you're taking it and it's gibberish, gibberish, gibberish. And then all of a sudden there's, again, with, with no uncertainty, there's a passage that says, watch out for the following factions. The Sethian Scourges, the Black Tongue Tribe, the, what would that be called? Um, let me check my notes <laughs> in a momento. Yeah, yeah. Your notes. Oh, wrong thing. Uh, the Vrail Olo, V R A E L O L O. Um, and then it it goes dot dot dot. The Wormer Core. Fuck. <laughs> and yeah, there you go. Thought that's that. that's a success for your history, but no how Sovereigndar apparently. As far as you can tell. Oh, worse. Worse. More Pretty things for me to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, that is your day. Thank you. Um, you guys good for like another 15 minutes? Yeah, I'm good. Ish? Yeah, yeah I'm good. Okay, we're going to finish out the day with Ashes. Ashes, what are you doing? What's All your day? Right, so, What's happening? Um, after, you know, everybody kind of breaks to do their stuff uh, i'm gonna kind of like hang behind and um I'll, I'll wait till like you know I, I mean in the morning i'm assuming we don't have a whole lot of business going on at the tavern. you actually have a couple regulars that come in for breakfast okay all right that's yeah. cool um so your place is almost kind of like a restaurant it's a tavern yeah. in the evening but throughout <clears throat> the rest of the day it's kind of like a restaurant like you, you, you hired a good cook. It gets yeah, business. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. once, if if I can find Cine, when yep. they're not having like a lot of stuff going on, like, um, hey Cine, um, what can you know, I do? I kind of came into this right, sure. and I haven't been very present. So <laughs> I was thinking, uh, I've got some, uh, some. Um, iron in the forge uh, it's, uh, that's cooking right now, but I find myself with some free time. Mind if I hang around here for the day and just kind of see what you guys do? Maybe maybe even help out a little bit? I mean, you are one of the uh, owners? Proprietors? Yeah, see, see I, it's, it's weird, right? It's, it is a it is an odd scenario, I will admit. But, right. I mean... You all pay the bills, and that's that's is what it is. Uh, you are more than welcome to hang about. Uh, oh. <laughs> no one is going I, to complain. I'd like to maybe be a little bit more present. Uh, we're going back not too long, but I thought uh, maybe just the day out here might might do some good. Well, and if you're. Throughout the day, like if if Cine, like I don't want to be a problem. If there's something that Cine would need help with, I would be glad to do it. Cine is not like, bashful about about like oh no 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 master and, and like that's not that's not Cine's personality in any way shape or right. fashion. If you're hanging about and and you're like I will assist if you need me to assist, uh, Cine Cine himself isn't like oh do this or oh do that or anything like that. But Cine will absolutely be like all right, um, you know. Uh, this is about to be uh, lunch rush. Uh, Anna Wing could use some help, right? Or um, Thernarv and Guillaume could use assistance doing X, Y, Z. Or Lyf sometimes gets a little behind when we get too many big drink orders, right? Like, like, um, oh, go check on this thing for me, right? Like, uh, Cine will absolutely be like, okay, yeah, you want to work? Well, let's work. Do it, All right. right? Yeah, that's that's that. Uh, I'll and do that. Uh, the rest of your employees are generally okay. There's obviously like there's a, there's a little bit of like so stuff weird. here or there where it's like it's a little weird. Was one not you're you're not you're kind of like that non-present boss, right? So it's it's slightly weird there. But then it, it's less 
you you find throughout the day it's less that and it's more um you're a tiefling werewolf who delves into the darkness of the undermountain mm -hmm. so you know there's that um uh also if there's a, like a, throughout the day of just like chit chatting if there i would i would probably ask you know you know because I'm not very present, I'm not, and honestly, our group is probably not hyper aware of what you guys need. And, you know, are you, like, having done this for a day and understanding a little bit what goes on, is there anything that you need? Having spent the day and discussing things with Sine... You find that the lifted spirits is not in need of anything. Sine does a good job as a steward, as a as a chamberlain, right? Um, he runs this place, and if they required more servers or more whatever, right? Like uh, better this, that, or the other. Um, Sine would have approached you guys and been like, we need this thing um, or else it's not going to work out or this person's not working out or this is a problem or what have you, right? Um, and that's just not the case. So, I mean, there are, right, there are always pressure points, but none of them are, oh, this makes me hate my job pressure points, Um you know, that type of, that type of yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 right? I get you. Um, you realize as you are, as you are helping people do things throughout the day, um, you're just, that's it. You're just helping. Like your aid is not required. Um, it doesn't like super alleviate any pressure or anything like that. It's just, oh, cool. You're helping. Sweet. And and that's that. That's, that's Which what I wanted. Which is from, I don't know, it, it depends on your take on it or anything like that. But from the fact of it's, of, it shows you a level of autonomy that the lifted spirits can perform under if so chosen, right? You guys right. could leave hands off and not touch the lifted spirits and it would probably function just fine. But if you participate or do things like this or get involved, etc., etc., then perhaps the lifted spirits grows into something more. Dina um, says, "Goddamn and, tiefling, get in my business, trying and, to replace me." And throughout, right, your um, your presence again, right? It's it's kind of weird here or there, but it is relatively warmly received by your staff, and it's very warmly received by the patron, right? Like, um, you guys have kind of noticed this, but every time you guys are around, the patrons love it you're kind of you're kind of mascots for the 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 regulars right like the regulars that go to the lifted spirits they go because they like the place and it's a good place but also there's the caveat of oh yeah we're we go to the place that has those those guys right like and now that this shit is happening around the city which by the way all of you while you're out throughout the day um that song is being played everywhere. No, um, it's being played no. fucking everywhere. <laughs> um. Anyways, so yeah, um, you you have a good day. Um, you're not especially helpful. I mean, but right, like, I mean, if if the patrons are actually like super into it, I mean, I I would be fine, like. You know, sitting with them, ch you know, chatting them up, you know, be like, hey, yeah. Uh, do uh, me do a thing. favor. Roll me, um, just roll me a d20 period. No skill check, just a d20 period, but at advantage. So roll me two of them. You got it. Which is good. Is out for Work old. devolves to day oh, drinking. Uh, same no, number. Seven. Okay. This is basically like a gradient of like, 
<laughs> don't take this the wrong way. This is basically a gradient of like how useful you were, right? So you don't like you don't impair anything like that, but it's it's like we all know this, right? Like if any of our bosses suddenly like showed up and was like getting in no. our work, right? No. Like here, let me let me help you with this thing. We'd be like, fuck, no, stop. Please, oh, away. go away, no. right? Go away, <laughs> right? So like, you're you're not a detriment, but you're not really helping, yeah. <laughs> you know? It's fair. It's fair. Yeah, it is. It is what it is. But again, right? It's not seen with like, you're not um. The staff. I can't wait to do this again tomorrow. Yeah, the staff isn't like angry or anything about this. They just. It's more of like a oh, oh, he's trying to. He's trying to be involved, isn't he? How cute, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, uh. Anyways, so uh, that is your day, your night. Yeah. I'm going back to the temple. Go back to the temple. Um. You go back to the temple, and tonight is different yet again. Um, Taverin is waiting for you in the lobby. You arrive. Hey, 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 Taverin. What, what fresh hell do you got today? Oh, no, no, no. Tonight's fun. Tonight's, tonight's... Oh, and, and last night wasn't? No, last night sucked. Sarcasm. It... Wow. All right. <laughs> right. How do you feel about glass? <laughs> yeah, crystal baby. Um, indifferent. Mirrors? Uh, oh, similarly indifferent. I think the last one I interacted with was a portal somewhere. Follow right. Me. So he takes you up, up, up. The central spire of the House of the Moon. Not all the way to the top. I think you have been all the way to the top or you have at least seen the top from the ground before. It is, um, it's a ritual area that has this kind of like focal half moon scenario that catches the moonlight in, um, uh, for the ceremony of Simril, right? Um, which is the the longest night, the winter solstice. Um, I believe that's Simril. Um, but it, he doesn't take you all the way to the top. He takes you to the chamber underneath it, and you find yourself in a room, rather large room, with dozens of mirrors, um and glass panes on rolling frames. And in the center is a big ass fucking crystal um, that is very dimly shining um, a pale glow. And he's like, we're low. You and I are gonna have fun tonight. See all these? Yeah. We're catching moonlight. Catching it. He points, and there's these like these there's these holes or arrow slits or, or focal points for um, the moonlight to come in all around the room. And he says, "Yeah, we gotta move these in concert with the moonlight." And there's like again, like there's a dozen mirrors and 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 freaking like uh, glass things. And we have to do it in such a way that we ampli amplify and f focus the light into the crystal. There's a pattern. I'll show you it. It's it's fine. All right. It's not fine. It's a <laughs> pain in the ass. <laughs> and these things are really heavy. And you spend like seven hours dragging glass panes and mirrors and shit into this 
complicated fucking diagram of patterns constantly because as soon as you're done with one right you're pulling another because the fucking moonlight is consistently moving but you can see throughout the night that crystal gets brighter and brighter it never gets to the point to where it's just shining outwards because it's this dim glow but it almost feels like it's filling up right 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 it is exhausting work Legitimately, somebody does this every night. Um, he he looks at you and he says, kind of uh, weary, like you are. He says, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's rough. Gracious, there's gonna be a better way. Uh, there's absolutely better ways. They, I told you, everything here is is for for training it's for getting better it's for the next crop speaking of which when are you gonna actually proclaim yourself a servant of Salune stop fucking around ooh ooh you gotta go through confirmation damn that's the thing uh I mean I've thought about it a little bit like, my order, we do things in the name of Salune, but we don't, we don't, you know, pray, don't offer tribute, we just, it's like, um, we like what she stands for. Uh, don't take this the wrong way, but... half -asser. You're all silly. You're obviously dedicants. You wear her skin. Hell, you wield her freaking blade. Yeah, that was, uh, that was some weird happenstance. Weird but, uh, happenstance. Yeah, happenstance. Just wield a weapon of a god. Sure, that's that's how that works. Right? Built it? That's yeah. how that works, right? Mm, yeah, happenstance. Okay, well, I will say... That one night where uh, me and Zalara spent time, and no, not really accomplishing a whole lot, but that uh, that felt good. Felt, I don't know, like it was going somewhere. Are you ready to dedicate yourself? When are we going back? <laughs> Out of character. Time out. Um, tomorrow? <laughs> are we going are we going back in the dungeon tomorrow? Or the day after? No, no, it's the fifteenth. No, it you guys are at you you guys are at least here for the sixteenth. And potentially no, going back on the seventeenth. Yeah. And if not the seventeenth, the eighteenth. Yeah. You're either going back in on the seventeenth or the eighteenth. Because Zach, you still need one more day to finish, right? Yeah, I need tomorrow. So finishing is on the 16th. Yes. Right. Yeah. I mean, tell you what. Let me think it over. And I'll come back tomorrow night. And uh, I'll let you know. I accept saloon A into my heart. Come back tomorrow night. This crystal will flood the rooftop with moonlight. You and I will fight. And if you're not serious, I'll kill you. Yeah, kill him. Join or die. <laughs> Okay. You're on. He shrugs. And he extends his hand towards you. With a dagger. It just oh, I'll take hand. it. He shakes it. And then kind of like 
grips it, reverse like grips it, pulls you in, and claps you on the shoulder. And he says, Don't come back if you're not ready. I will kill you. Same. Okay. I believe you. Kind of like, let's go, and nonchalantly just kind of like shrugs and, eh. And walks you out? Yep. In your mind, this entire time, you hear this kind of like high pitched, like, <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's like, what are you, it's a it, it's fine. It's like that time I jumped on the fairy dragon. It's like, oh, Jesus. You think it's a bad idea or she thinks he's hot? That's going to be it for tonight's session, everybody. <laughs> um, we will Excellent. be back next week for more Dungeon of the Mad Mage as we wrap up our uh, resting period and we figure out what the... What the... What the... What the fuck? Um, and see how that goes. That's Anyways, good. thanks for joining us. Bye-bye, everybody. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the distant horizon.